How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Friday here on this show. we got a lot to talk about. SmackDown is tonight. We've got some AW ratings, and there's an NXT 2.0 coming up next week. We're going to have some matches, and Raw's Monday. I think Triple Mania is coming up. Jeff Hardy. And oh yeah, Vince has stepped down as the chairman and CEO of WWE to be replaced by Stephanie McMahon. I can't even say it with a straight face. My God. Bro, if this guy could write storylines like the real life storyline that's going on right now, holy smokes. So if you guys haven't heard which I'm sure you have, allegations against Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon stepping down. Stephanie McMahon took a leave of absence. And then, as we've been talking about, in a totally bizarre turn of events, she stepped down. They started hiring people to do her job. And then, first they went, privately were telling people that Stephanie sucked at her job. They buried her, privately. And then... They actually, there was a a public story where they talked about how Stephanie wasn't good at her job. They buried her. And now she is back as the new chairman and CEO of WWE. And Vince McMahon is going to continue doing his job, the exception of his chairman and CEO duty. He's He's still writing all the shows and everything. Still tearing up scripts, brother. And he's going to appear on SmackDown tonight and there's a lot that's been said about this but we'll tell you about it and more after the break dave Meltzer joins us in the second segment semper vivi coming up next observer live back in the show brian elber is here wrestling observer live mike semper vivi also of wrestlingobserver.com i missed the eagles for this today (laughs) but i'm back good pull for today in the latest development in one of wrestling's biggest stories i'll say Vince McMahon has voluntarily stepped down as WWE chairman and CEO while the company's special committee of the board investigates alleged misconduct. Stephanie McMahon was named interim CEO and chairwoman until the investigation concludes. However, Vince McMahon, quote, will retain his role and responsibilities related to WWE's creative content during this period and remains committed to cooperating with the review underway. Stephanie tweeted she will be returning from her leave of absence, assuming the role of interim chairman and CEO, I love our company, excited to work with uh, Nick Khan, etc. On Wednesday, the Wall Street Journal revealed the board was investigating Vince McMahon over a $3 million hush pact with a former employee, from which he allegedly had a relationship with, in addition to other potential non-disclosure agreements. They announced they were a uh, special committee had been uh, created to investigate these allegations into alleged misconduct by Vince and John Laurinaitis, head of talent relations. By the way, as of today, nothing on jo- on John Laurinaitis. Nothing. Zero zilch. Uh, meaning he hasn't been fired. I'm trying to figure out what that means. The special committee has appointed Stephanie to serve as interim CEO and interim chairwoman. So then we find out today that uh, Vince is going to be on SmackDown tonight. Now, a lot, a lot has been said about Vince McMahon appearing on SmackDown tonight. The release from WWE referred to him as Mr. McMahon, which, of course, is his character. I believe it might have been uh, MSNBC or something had reported that he would be doing a, quote, in-character interview on the show tonight. Obviously, everybody is expecting he's going to come out in front of the crowd. I think it would be much wiser for him to do a pre-tape because I've seen live Vince McMahon, and it would be a much better idea for him to do a pre-tape. But uh, listen, when SmackDown airs, we'll find out what happened. Until then, it's Vince, dude. He can change his mind. It's, it is the idea of Vince McMahon coming out in character to do a segment live on SmackDown tonight is a level of madness that I cannot even begin to comprehend. I would presume, and I shouldn't presume this because the guy is like, he's nuts, but I would presume that you should just do a pre-tape deal and say, 
basically what they said in the press release, I am stepping down. You know, I respect the board. Whatever they determine is whatever they determined. Enjoy the show tonight. Him coming out live, doing his strut, having all of the fans. I had somebody the other day go, oh, no matter what happens, Vince can never appear in front of the fans again. I was like, what planet do you live on? This dude comes out strutting tonight. They're all going to go like this. They're all going to cheer. You all know this. So we'll see what happens here tonight. But as far as like what all of this means, I mean, Vince... He's he's stepping down, but still doing everything that he was doing on a daily basis. He's still writing the shows. He's still tearing up scripts. It is beyond fascinating that Stephanie McMahon took her, quote, leave of absence. They buried her first privately and then later publicly. And now here she is back as the new chairwoman and CEO of WWE. You can't write stuff this good. And uh, why they buried her. How all of this ties in, I know everyone has a thousand theories, and we don't know anything, okay? We don't know anything. You can come up with any conspiracy theory that you want. The only other thing that I will say, the only other thing that I will say is that they have made it clear that uh, there have been other non-disclosure agreements, and they mentioned Vince McMahon and they mentioned John Laurinaitis, okay? The investigation is ongoing. The big question, and the next hammer that could fall, is if there are other non-disclosure agreements involving other people. And I'm not saying that there are, but I am saying that I wouldn't be surprised. Nor honestly is this like something that anybody listening to this would probably be surprised by. But this investigation is ongoing, and I expect that there will be more that will come out. And I I think that uh, when that happens, then we can talk about it. But until then, there's a lot of speculation. You know, fans have been asking a lot of questions. I apologize for the other night on Observer Radio when I got very angry because some one of the questions was, where will everything be in a year? Bro, <laughs> dude, Wednesday night, where will everything be in a year? Dude, nobody, nobody would have predicted in two days Stephanie McMahon was going to be the chairwoman and the CEO of WWE. Nobody. So I can sit here and I could say, well, maybe this and maybe that and da-da-da. Bro, we don't know nothing other than what has come out. If you want to ask, like, you know, what what have the wrestlers been told? The wrestlers have been told virtually nothing. The wrestlers know what you know right now. They haven't given them any other whatever. Pat McAfee, I think, did a thing today, and he's totally in the dark. It's a shoot. Everybody's in the dark. Nobody knows anything. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the update as of right now. For those of you guys who want a breaking news audio, I mean, there's nothing to break except what's out. Everything else is speculation. You know, why was Stephanie buried? I don't know. There's a lot we don't know. So, I think a better question is kind of who, you know, and because Claudine Lillian was leaving around the same time, and they were very unhappy, obviously, with her performance. She had only been there, what, a year And she kind of fell into some of the things that Stephanie was doing as far as merchandising and branding and content pushing and all that sort of stuff. So probably something I'll ask Dave, because that's interesting to me. Was it somebody from the board? Obviously, because talk about who sent this email. No, not no, not who sent the email, who actually was doing the bearing of Stephanie McMahon. Oh, well, because I mean, I know, but I mean, it's not like, well, who is it? It's not somebody that, uh. I mean, I know everyone's going to be really mad at me, but it's not my thing. It's not my place to say this. It's, is it, it was, somebody on the board? Is it somebody? I don't believe it was somebody on the board. But that's, and listen, that's only the one that I heard about. I don't know who they had. I know that they were getting the word out privately first that she sucked at her job. Well, that's then why, the story came out where they publicly said that she sucked at her job. But it, 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 I don't well, think. Well, they, they said it was, they said it a lot softer than that. And that's why, be, and the fact that Vince or nobody, pushed back at all once that Business Insider thing came out at the beginning of the month. 
You know, that's why I was curious as to, to who it was, because obviously it feels like it was rubber stamped, obviously, by Vince. But I was wondering if it came from the board, if it came from who it actually came from and how heavy was that burial behind the scenes? Because obviously well, the person, we see where she's at today. You could you could ask Andrew Ziri and he's talked about it a lot. And he he uh, was was directly told. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. And, and I think it's pretty clear, actually, with Stephanie in charge right now. I don't think that one had anything to do with the other. These are two separate stories that are now connected in a completely bizarre way. The The best theory that I've heard, which, you know, I think it's nuts, but the best theory that I've heard is Stephanie was going to step away and they were concerned that news of her departure would cause like this big, you know, stock, stock market dump. crash or stock crash. <laughs> Which and is so silly. so the the idea was, well, if we bury her and say she sucked <laughs> and that we're replacing her with people who are better, then the stock won't tank. And honestly, that's like the best theory that I've heard. But even that it's like, well, then you'd have to like clear this with Stephanie. Stephanie, listen. Yeah. We're concerned about the stock falling. <laughs> yeah. And so we want to publicly tell everyone that you suck. Are you okay with that? Which, you know, given how much money but she has tied up I in was... stock, she might be like, yeah, save my stock. <laughs> but it just seems ridiculous. But but that's why I was wondering who actually said it, because then we have a situation where now she's also now back as the figurehead face of the company right now, while Vince, quote unquote, steps aside here. And it was amazing at seven o'clock Eastern time this morning to start getting texts about WWE has released a press release. And then they follow it up with Vince going to be on TV tonight. Amazing. Well, let's talk to Dave about it after the break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, Dave Meltzer, who will be on CNN 2 Pacific 5 Eastern today talking about this story. And if you're a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, Dave and Geert are going to be up tonight with uh, tons more so we obviously can't cover everything here, but uh, subscribers can check that out later on tonight. And uh, Dave, Vince has stepped down as chairman and CEO, replaced by Stephanie McMahon. And Vince appearing on SmackDown tonight in some form or fashion. What do we know? What do you know? Well, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's a cosmetic change. I mean, the fact that he's still... Running creative, I think you know this is this is just a repeat of what happened when he was in trouble decades ago. Yes, and Linda all of a sudden was president, and uh, you know, so it's like that's kind of how he does things when this type of stuff happens. So I don't really, I mean, it's gotten a lot of headlines, but I don't know that it's significant. The fact that it's Stephanie tells me also that it's a cosmetic change because. You know, she was gone. It is a surprise, though. They went from burying her two weeks ago or a week and a half ago to making her CEO. It's a crazy world that we live in. It sure is a crazy world that we live in. So, uh, um, yes, Stephanie McMahon, who was uh, privately and publicly buried as being bad at her job. I mean, what how do you do you just if people ask, explain that, well, she was bad at that job, but she'll do excellent at this job. Well, I don't think anyone, you know, again, Vince is running the company. I don't think that, um, and Stephanie is, you know, it's like, it's like uh, when, you know, if somebody else was put in the interim CEO position, I would take it seriously. And it's not that I don't take Stephanie seriously, because obviously I do, but I think this is very clearly, um, you know, it's very clearly Vince is still running the company, but they're looking like they're trying to make changes. But, you know, I mean, the interesting thing is, is that, uh, Going forward, um, you know, how this story, you know, eventually turns out, that's the really interesting one. You know, and again, Stephanie's made interim CEO. That's very, you know, that wording alone kind of tells you that it's like the idea is, is that it's just because there is an investigation going on. They, um, you know, with the board of directors that Vince probably shouldn't be the head of the board of directors while an investigation by the board of directors is going on. So I think that's the thing. And and the fact that Stephanie got it tells you that Vince is still in control. Now, the other the other question is that uh, this story comes out. Vince steps down today. And uh, I've heard nothing about John Laurinaitis. Is he just showing up at SmackDown and doing his job? And I mean, it seems... I, I, I don't know if he's in Minneapolis or not. 
Um, that is was the big question, like this morning, that everybody had was, okay, we know Vince is coming. Is John Laurinaitis coming? And um, I have not heard yet if he's there. So this Vince, this Vince appearance tonight, we've heard a lot of different things. Uh, the WWE, their own uh, announcement said that he would be there live, which of course sounds like he will be in front of the crowd. I think it would be a horrible idea. I think um, MSNBC was claiming it would be, quote, in character. That would be a horrible that idea, too. That sounds even worse. Yep. So, I mean, we're not going to know until the show goes in the air exactly what he's going to do. But, uh, you know, I personally, when I heard he was going to be on the show, was an- I'm, I'm anticipating, like, the show opens with a short video statement basically saying what they said in the press release. He can't possibly be thinking of doing something. But they announced him as Mr. McMahon. That was well, the thing. They, they made very sh- certain to say that, including a strong picture of him up there. So Yeah. yeah. It's it's amazing. I mean, it feels it feels to me like it's a ratings ploy as opposed to well, of course a, it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah, as opposed to like some explanation. So as a ratings ploy, they are going to do something to try and build, you know, ratings and and stuff off of this in some way. Uh, so that makes it. Um, I mean, I I don't want to say I give them credit, but it is something to show. I mean, it does show how desperate they are for ratings, and they've always been. That that they would take a situation like this and and try to twist it for ratings. I mean, because that is the but that is totally Vince's wheelhouse. It, well, look, we've seen examples of that for decades too. Yeah, of course, it's not a surprise. Now, this, I mean, we again will not know until SmackDown is over. But uh, you know, there's been a lot of of talk about. We do have a Riddle match with uh, Roman Reigns tonight. Randy Orton uh, may be out for a while, so he may be off the books for the summer. Obviously, they're going to want to uh, have people talking about something else. I mean, it seems like a nothing part of the story, but is it possible Riddle actually wins that title tonight to try to shift? You know, I mean, it, it was it was like I'd say ninety nine percent no yesterday, but today, sure. I mean, I could I could see that. Um, I mean, I'm sure all plans that they had before are out the window. Um, and yeah, I'm sure I, I, you know, I don't know, but is, is, would it be possible? Yeah, I could see it being possible, you know, trying to, especially with the mentality that well, we'll probably have more people watching this show than ever before. They were going to do a big angle tonight anyway, so they may do a different big angle tonight. Tell everybody the history of the last time Vince, uh, quote, yeah. stepped down, but actually, I mean, he was replaced, but it meant nothing. Well, uh, Linda McMahon was president of the company when, uh, you know, Vince, uh, well, Vince was indicted, you know, on charges that he doesn't even remember anymore and, um, you know, went to trial and everything like that. So, um, but eventually, of course, you know, uh, was back running things and uh, had all the same title. It actually took years. Linda was on paper president for many, many years, you know, even after Vince was acquitted in the tri- in the uh, steroid distribution trial. Um, steroid conspiracy trial is actually the, the better term for it. But so, yeah, I mean, that's it's again the M.O. I mean, Linda's not coming back to be CEO. So Stephanie's the one. So there you go. It's it's the, it's basically a repeat. You know, the the uh, the crux of this this issue seems to be the uh, amount of money that this person was paid originally, which was one hundred thousand dollars a year and then uh, being bumped to two hundred thousand dollars a year, allegedly as a result of this uh, this affair with Vince. Yeah, so that's a that's a that's a real smoking gun. That's you know, like that's the one if something's going to get him, that's the one that's going to get him. Now, the impression that I was was given is that uh, the job that she was doing, uh, it is rare to make one hundred thousand dollars a year and it is exceedingly rare to make two hundred thousand dollars a year. I mean, if you look at the the structure of of WWE and what other people are making, I mean, would this be unusual in WWE to pay someone even a hundred thousand dollars for this the, the, job? The, the, the hundred the hundred is not unusual at all. The hundred's probably about right. The two hundred's unusual, yes. Okay, yes. so yeah. but it yeah. wouldn't be out of the ordinary for uh, someone who somewhere else might only make sixty thousand a year. In WWE to do that job, it would not be unusual to perhaps make hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, no, the hundred thousand is not unusual at all for the for the position she was hired in. The two hundred um, would be on the high end for sure. Yes, yes, it was a different position. She was John Lorne's assistant, but two hundred would be pretty high for that for that position. Yeah. 
What have you would heard? It matter? Yes. Mike. Would it matter if she got that raise while she was being moved to, to Johnny Ace's position? Because obviously there is a claim coming from that email that she was, quote, passed like a toy, which, again, depending on how sinister that line really is, you know. What is that line? So, what is that? What does that line yeah, mean? What does that mean? And it's like, you know, were you yeah. transferred with a raise with the expectation of something? Were you, you know, that's the timing of the raise. Will that actually matter? I think the timing of the raise matters a whole hell of a lot. Yes. Especially since it was in, in um, I believe it was in April 2021, which was at the same time they were cutting costs left and right. Um, not that, you know, not that somebody doesn't get a raise, but then again, didn't they, didn't they go through that period where all raises were frozen? I mean, that may, but that they may did have, been. yeah, they did have that, that period, but I mean, yeah. And I don't know if that's April 2021 or not. I'd have to remember my, that. my, my concern with the whole thing is that, you know, it's basically going to come down to, can you prove that the raise was given because of the sexual relationship? Because you know if, Vince is going to argue, but, we just but, gave her a raise. We give people raises all the time. That's what I'm wondering, yeah. It's... Yeah, but if there is a sexual relationship and, and she had the raise, even if you try to justify it and saying she was gotten the raise anyway, there's no way. That's a that's a terrible, terrible look. That's, that's, that's the one when I read it, it's like, um, you know, the, and then, look, they're going to do everything they can to try to, to do exactly what you said, but... That's just a terrible look. And has there uh, been anything from McDivitt over the last couple of days? Because usually have, he is on top of things. I have not heard from Jerry McDivitt since this thing started, which would be in a situation like this highly unusual. Yes. Not, Dave, not shocking, people, but unusual. A lot of people have you know, speculated on you know, lots of different things in fantasy book the McMahons out of the picture. Vince, what if they take it over from all that stuff? I mean, have you is, what, actually what, had to... What what does happen though? If if, if well, that's what I was picture. wondering. I, ha, have you even had time to think about the fact that there's been a McMahon promoting in ring sports since like 1915, and <laughs> yeah. what actually then happens after that? You know, when it comes to well, no Stephanie, McMahon in if, charge. If Stephanie is gone, you know, then that might end. Yeah, you know that. that because streak. here's the thing: if they if if Vince gets forced out, at what point do other people on that board who don't have as much of an interest in this and looking at it from a financial that go, I want to push all these McMahons out. We've got to move this thing forward. And then again, I know they have all that voting stock, and there's a lot of things that would need to drop and happen. But if they're able to actually then physically force out of it, Vince out of that picture, that would eventually force everybody out, would it not? Um, it could, it could. Um, but I mean, like the only one we're talking about is Stephanie. It's like, um, and the That's fact true. that, that well, and, and the fa- and Hunter, he's never going to be like, well, he's still on the board too, but on the board. Like, yeah. At least for, for now, his position, his position becomes interesting too. You know, I don't consider him. I mean, I guess he's a member of the McMahon family. Um, he doesn't have the last name McMahon, but yeah. Um, I mean, I, 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 you know, he's, he's lost a lot of power in the last year. And, and he's got a health issue. I don't, you know, um, yet. Well, Dave, actually, I hate to say this, but we gotta, we got to go. we got to uh, head to a break. Back in a moment, everybody. We'll uh, plug the Observer after the break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simpervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. If you have questions, text me, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Think before texting. And uh, two things I want to... Uh, Mentioned because it had been brought up in the chat. Number one, the Kevin Dunn insider trading thing. That story, whatever it was, was already retracted. And uh, even before it was retracted, you know, people were saying, oh, man, Kevin Dunn sold a lot of stock, like, right before this broke. Like, could he? Listen, if you follow the stock, uh, you know, who sells and et cetera in WWE, because that stuff is all public, Kevin Dunn sells all the time. All the time. So... Nothing to that story. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was, uh, I think you were asking Dave about, like, what happens if Vince is ousted? And uh, I'm not saying that Vince will not be ousted. I don't know. because I don't I, think I, he will. I would but... not have said Wednesday that Stephanie was going to be in charge. But I will say this. That, uh, that press release and this decision and the way that it was worded in the press release, you know and I know, and all of our wonderful listeners here who are who are uh, wrestling fans mm-hmm. who have, uh, you know, you've watched WWE, and we have a very intelligent fan base. You guys have seen wrestling all over the world. 
you've seen different promotions, you have seen promotions in different eras, and I think we all know that you can run pro wrestling and you can run a successful pro wrestling organization without Vince McMahon in charge, okay? But, but, the people that don't follow wrestling very closely, the people that don't follow history, don't know about, you know, a lot about AEW, New Japan, whatever, they are very, it's like, it's Vince or nothing. Like, if Vince, if Vince is gone, this, this stock is just going to fall off a cliff because nobody can do wrestling except Vince McMahon. There is very much that, that feeling amongst people that, you know, don't really follow this closely. And so when they sent out that press release and they were like, he's stepping down as chairman and CEO, but don't worry, he's still going to be doing creative. He's still going to be the guy. It's very clear that they felt that they needed to do something, but they want you to know Vince McMahon is still going to be the brains behind this whole WWE thing right here. So that tells me that like, they are gonna they are gonna do anything that they can to make sure that Vince is not ousted, at least as the head of creative, because I think they feel that it's not gonna affect the stock in a hugely negative way to have him step down from that role and put another McMahon in the role, and he's still doing everything he was doing before. But I think they are very concerned about the idea of Vince McMahon is no longer involved in this company in any way. And I think they're going to do everything they can to avoid having to say that. Yeah, well, you know, as the pendulum swings and Vince gets older and we look at what Nick Khan has done for this company, and that maybe starts to become a talking point with those in WWE who obviously, and look, I'm not saying that Nick Khan is like trying to push Vince out or anything, but when you look at the deals that WWE has, it's because of what Nick Khan negotiated for him. And he can be in charge now. And I, as as time goes on, again, as time goes on, it is becoming a lot of people, it's becoming a lot easier to believe that that company, you know, and you start looking at it, it's like, can it go on without a McMahon there? And it's like, it's going to. At some point, it's, it's probably going to have to. And from a corporate point of view, you know, with the Nick Cons, with people like that, it's just, it's interesting to see the way things are going to go and if this accelerates anything at all, you know, it, it, internally. And, and, and there's a long way to go when it comes to this whole case anyway. And I'm sure the Wall Street Journal is going to have more about it. And we'll have to see what the in independent investigation is and everything. And, you know, I said yesterday, I think, Vince, the way things look on the surface is going to probably beat this out. I'm not so sure about Johnny Ace, who... You know, from the time he got back there, there were feelings. And, you know, we'll see how many of those feelings have to do with past relationships once these NDAs come out. And that's, you know, unfortunately, what's getting forgotten about in this, too, are people trying to now dox this woman, you know, uh, uh, who is has signed this NDA and who, again, you know, how she feels about this and, and all that and anybody else that's now going to have to suffer with this as news of these NDAs. Again, if things more things start leaking out from this board investigation, you know, people are going to take it upon themselves to try to find out who these people were. And it's just it's unfortunate for them. This person here says, I just wanted to remind you of my text from yesterday about Jeff Jarrett potentially taking over creative if Vince really had to go away. And hey, listen, I mean, Bruce Pritchard is, uh, he's had a lot of health issues. And I think uh, they said he just underwent emergency surgery. And I don't know if that's related because he had a, a shoulder issue as well. And uh, he was going to have surgery for that. I'm not sure if this is uh, the same or different. I would think that if you, if you knew that you had a shoulder problem and you, you knew that you were going to have surgery for it, uh, you wouldn't have an emergency surgery. So it could be something different. But one way or the other, I mean, I don't think it's going to be him. You know, Triple H, I don't think it's going to be him. And, uh, you know, you are starting to fall down towards uh, towards a Jeff Jarrett. I would obviously, you know, choose Paul Heyman before Jeff Jarrett. But I don't know what... Uh, well, it also depends on who's left all... at the time that this would break down and happen. And, and you know... I want to mention something else, because this also was mentioned a lot on the board about, about Hunter. And, uh, oh, well, you know, uh, he can't wrestle anymore, but uh, somebody actually used the term like, you know, he could do normal person stuff. 
And it's like, <laughs> wait, what? Uh, WWE is normal person stuff. Are you, where have you been, dude? What? There's not one person. I bet you anything. I bet you couldn't find one person of the 500 employees and 200 wrestlers or whatever. You couldn't find one person working for WWE who would say, I live a normal life. This is a normal job. So, no, this is not a normal person thing for Triple H to do creative for WWE. I do well, not think. It, wait a second. It also comes from the top down, though. And you know that Vince doesn't sleep, and that's how he has lived his life. You know, maybe Hunter's been thinking, okay. Well, that's true, you know, but you're still. If I want to stay in this business, I'm in this position right now. How can I temper this thing? You're you're correct that Vince is is runs an in, in, insane, crazy ship, but. There are there's five hours of live TV every week. I mean, a normal I'm person's not it's gonna job. be easy, but I'm saying, but like Tony Khan does four hours of TV every week. Tony Khan, or three hours. Holy of TV. smokes! If that guy had a heart issue, oh, it would be bad. That guy runs around uh, like I, a but, chicken but, but with his head cut the off. Thing, but Brian. I mean, to, to be fair, though, like Dusty Rhodes had six hours in like 87. Like, I mean, Dusty Rhodes didn't have a severe heart issue. That's my point. Nobody. Had, yes, he had Bell's palsy, which is, is brought on by stress, as we saw with Jim Ross, who ended up getting it twice. So actually, he was going through that at the time he was doing these things. I'm not saying this that is not a job for Triple H with a bad heart. It's look, not. I, you're you're right. You're Thank right you. about that. Maybe, maybe. But like you can also do things without stressing yourself to the point of insanity. And God knows we don't know what his real medical condition is right now. We don't know how healthy he is. And frankly, we also don't know what he really wants. He's obviously still involved there in a stressful position because just doing anything in WWE is stressful. Although that's yes. that's a completely and here's a completely other left turn on that is WWE, for right and for wrong, has been able to function in the way that it has and achieve the successes that it's had because they have such an iron claw, insane person at the top of it. Once Vince actually goes, it is going to be interesting to see how people react, how the company reacts, you know, and just in general, what the feeling is going to be. Because, you know, once you have that demon out who's got holding everything down, who in some ways that's a real negative, but in some ways to run a successful business, it can be a positive. That change from Vince to anyone, anyone is really actually going to be whenever it happens, however it happens, is going to be fascinating. Any updates on Sasha and her possibly being released? No update. I presume if it's in the works, when it happens, it'll happen. And until then, there is no update. Quick look at the other uh, stories here today. Uh, as I mentioned on the uh, Brian and Vinny show last night, so here is the story involving uh, the ladder match on Wednesday. So I was told that the Hardys originally were going to win this ladder match and become the AW Tag Team Champions. And this idea dated back a while, okay? Then, when they had the match with the Young Bucks at the pay-per-view, Jeff had a bad day. And when, it, when the match was over, uh, it was kind of determined, dude, these guys ain't going to tag team title run. Jeff is a, is a total mess. And so uh, when Jeff got uh, pulled over with his uh, .28 or whatever it was, and he explained that he was on his way to a brain scan. He was on his way to a brain scan because uh, they examined Jeff Hardy afterwards. And, uh, you know, J Jeff later claimed he didn't remember any of the match. And then I believe it came out that he had he'd had double vision. And apparently he'd had it for a while and he didn't tell anybody. And this is dating back before AEW. These were like issues he was having in WWE. So when they heard that, they were like, this guy's got to get a brain scan. And so once they determined that he was going to get a brain scan, uh, he was no longer going to even be in the ladder match, much less win the titles. And so one of the ideas they discussed was, you know, the Hardys during their entrance, they get jumped and, uh, and they're taken out of the match. And it's going to be the uh, uh, Jurassic Express versus the Young Bucks and the Young Bucks end up winning the, the tag team titles. So uh, that obviously didn't happen either because Jeff got a DUI and then he was off the show. Now, I had a bunch of people going, so you're telling me they were going to false advertise? They were going to advertise them for the match and then they wouldn't be in the match? Yes, that's what I'm saying. And in fact, 
In fact, if you don't go on the, on social media, they actually, I mean, they didn't false advertise because they, they did announce it on social media. But if you only watch the television show, they on Friday were, uh, I think it was Friday, for sure it was Wednesday, they had advertised a three-way ladder match. And on Wednesday on TV, they just did a tag team ladder match. They never told you why the Hardys were not in the match. They never told you what happened to Jeff Hardy. They didn't explain why they were no longer in the match. So I can't say they false advertised because they did release it on social media. But I mean, the idea that they didn't mention anything on television about why it was no longer a three-way. I mean, I think that should tell you that they probably would have done this idea of beating them up. And listen, my impression was that after the DUI, it was only going to be a tag team match. But I, I or after the uh, the injury, when they decided to pull them from the match, I guess it's possible that Jeff would have been carted out and maybe Matt would have run back for a spot at the end. So they still technically did a three-way. But uh, regardless, that's what happened. And uh, now, I mean, we know what happened with Jeff. And, uh, man, you know... It's crazy enough that he decided to do all of that drinking and then drive. But, like, on top of that, he decided to do all that drinking, and then he was going to drive to his brain scan. So. Are we, are we sure that his brain scan was actually Monday, or did he actually just pull out, like, you know, where are you going? Like, I had some to do a uh, brain scan. I, I, like, I mean, honestly, like, I'm not saying, like, I it was really given matters, the impression but... that he actually actually was on the way to the brain scan. That's the impression I was given. He actually was on the way, and when he said that's Dude, what happened, that's what happened. He was at that convention the, the day before. You can imagine what that dude's night was like. Because I can't believe he woke up and decided, I'm going to pound, literally pound a fifth of fireball, put it down, and say I'm going to go drive. It's just, it's bizarre. Thank God nobody got hurt. I get a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, BB, also WrestlingObserver.com. So the uh, production meeting for SmackDown is ongoing as we speak. And uh, as of 10 minutes ago, Vince was nowhere to be seen. So, uh, which is not entirely unusual, but you know what's going to happen as soon as he shows up. I'm going to tear everything up. <laughs> production meeting for not. But anyway, uh, he's not there yet, but he's scheduled to be on the show tonight. And uh, Dave Meltzer scheduled to be on CNN at... Uh, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, which was a pre-tape, by the way, so uh, they've already got that in the can, talking about this. And then uh, Dave and Garrett, later on tonight, subscribers to WrestlingObserver.com, and uh, they'll have the latest on uh, that show as well. Dave and I talked a lot about it on Wednesday, if you want to go up and listen to that show. Because as a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, you get all the shows, 13,000 archived shows. So you can go up there and uh, listen to anything that you have missed for the low, low price of uh, twelve ninety nine per month. So anyway, uh, that's that. And then uh, also appearing today on Cameo, me, F4W Online. Because it is Father's Day weekend, and what better gift for the father in your life than a Cameo from me? So from check it out. mother. <laughs> F4W Online on Cameo. And, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, lots of great stuff. We'll be back later on this weekend. Dave and I will also be up for our subscribers. WrestlingObserver.com tomorrow night. Maybe Sunday. Kind of will depend. And uh, then Mike, I missed I missed out on so much to come back to do this show today. So I'm not, I'm not showing up Monday. This show is in your hands. I need a day off. Because I want to I wanna live like a normal person doing this job. Normal people don't work all the time. So I'm going to be a normal person. I'm going to take Monday off, and you're in charge. So have fun with this guy, everybody. He wanted to pull a power play on Wednesday. I'm pulling a power play today. Your show, Monday. Take it or leave it. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. Wrestling Observer Live.